Uh, all right, uh, so the subject of tonight is how you can bring a fast and relevant search to your React Native application. And by the way, I'm Mary, and I'm a technical product manager here at Algolia, and I work with all the teams uh, that uh, are working on developer experience uh, at Algolia here. Uh, the agenda tonight is about showing you what is the anatomy of a mobile search, what makes a mobile search great, and then we'll see a bit how you can implement a great search on React Native, and I will do some light coding about it. But first, well, search is hard, right? If you think about it, if you want to add search to your application, you need to think about a lot of different stuff. You need to think about how you can host your search, so a whole topic about infrastructure, how you can handle things such as typo tolerance, how are you going to rank your results, by the way? I mean, you need to think about that. So it's a lot of stuff to process and actually to develop. And then you have this whole part that is about search UI. Because in the end, what matters is what your users are going to see. And if your search experience is not good, you can have the best search ever. It will not work. But the thing is, search is just one small part of your application. You have still a lot of other things to think about, so how do we make sure we can still build a great search fast? So let's see what's the anatomy of a mobile search. The first thing you need to think about when you want to add search on a mobile is where you, you, you are going to actually place the search. So basically the first option you have is to go full length. It's basically what Amazon does on their own page. You have this big search bar that says search into our product. This is a good way to do things if your products need to be discovered by your user. In another way, if your user does not know what they are looking for, you need to actually have this search here. The other option is to put the search option in a dedicated tab. This is what Spotify does. It's good if search is one way to actually look into your product, but your user may have other options to look into what they're looking for. It's also, <coughs> sorry. And then this other option is a simple icon. It's not what we are actually um, advised for. You need to do that uh, if your use case enables it. And if you do it, be sure to have the good contrast within, with the icon and that the icon is kind of alone so that your user cannot miss your search function. After that, you need to think about your search screen. Never ever put a search screen without anything. You need to propose something to your user and you have option for that. The first option you have is to actually put the search history of your user and if possible, do it in a smart way. Only put searches you know your user uh, found some content he actually uh, liked or actually he enjoyed it. <coughs> Then you can also put some category browsing, for instance. It can help your user actually pre-filter <laughs> if search. And you can also suggest some training things like popular content, some stuff like that. But never, put, um, never do a screen that is empty. After that, you need to, s to find like, the pattern you want to use. The first pattern you can use is the auto-suggest. It's basically when you have the search bar, you search for something, and then you have some suggestion that appears. It's what Amazon does. It's basically what you need to do. Again, if your user does not know what they're looking for, you need to help them. You need to make them some suggestions. Uh, here you can see there's this little icon on the right. It's called the tapered pattern. This is very helpful on mobile because if you click on it, it will actually update the query, and then the suggestion will actually um, be refreshed. The second option you have is to go for the, what we call the instant result page. So here you do a query and then you already have your, have, have your results. It's what Spotify does. If you search for something, you get the artist, you get the songs, you get playlists, uh, stuff like that. It works well if you know that you can have a search that is fast, that comes in a few milliseconds. Otherwise, the experience is a bit, well, not good. And then, again, it works if your user knows what they're looking for. On Spotify, obviously, you kind of know what you're looking for here. 
but you can also combine both. It's what Pinterest does, it's what you have on Gmail, on Inbox. They suggest you some things at the, ver at the very top, but still they are able to provide some interesting results that you can actually uh, use. So really it depends on your use case here. And finally, you need to pay a, a bit of attention to your result screen. So a good, a good result screen needs to have a back or cancel button to go back to the previous page before you did the search. You need to actually put the query that your user looks for. You can put some important filters, a sort button, and then the results themselves. So now let's see what makes a mobile search great. First, the design. Here on mobile, the design is key. You don't have that much space, so you need to use it widely. And you actually need to uh, define what your user interface will look like. You basically have two options here. Either you go for a visually driven approach. So this works well if what your user are looking for, uh, they need like a visual. For instance, you are selling produce, you want to buy some shoes, they need to see the shoe before actually uh, buy them. So that matters first. But then you have other use cases where you may uh, want more like a specs driven approach. For instance, if you are a store locator, what will matter to your user is to know the store uh, distance, uh, the rating of the store, stuff like that. So maybe here the visual is less important and you want to highlight um, the specs that matters. But you also need a good relevance. If you don't have a good relevance, you can have the best and most beautiful application ever. It will like, I mean, it will not uh, be very useful. Your users they need to find what they're looking for. So you need to provide them results that they expect. Then you need to pay some effort about usability. You need to respect your user's efforts. First thing, the what we call fat finger issue, it's when you click on something on a mobile application and nothing happens. So here you need to be careful and you need to define clear kit area. You need to be also typo tolerant. It's even more true on mobile because, that we, because we know that typing on a mobile keyboard is hard. And if you under typo tolerance, you will reduce frustration from your user because if they make mistakes, they will still be able to find the good results. And then you need to help them scan the information. On the web, we all scan for information. We don't read everything. And here, more importantly, you need to highlight what part of the query match the results. <coughs> but be careful because if you go for the suggestion uh, thingy, it's the opposite. You want to highlight what differs from the query, um, like from the suggestion, sorry. Then you got to be careful about the speed because speed matters. Uh, we know that if a request takes more than 100 milliseconds, a user is starting to find that something is not good, something is wrong. So be careful about that. Try to have requests that can pass. But we also know that on mobile, connectivity something is sometimes is not here because you are on the subway, wherever. So you need to handle this as well. And you have ways to do that. You have ways to help your uh, user understand that something's going on. So you can add progress indicators. You can use skeleton screens to help them visualize where the content is going to appear. And you need to also, uh, you can also perform some lazy loading. So let's see now, how can we implement a search on a React Native app? First things first, we're going to use Algolia because Algolia handles for us a lot of stuff by default. It's hosted, so you don't have to take care about the infrastructure. Tempo tolerance is built in. You've got a good relevance like without nothing and you can customize it with your, cu with your business needs. But that's just one part. The other part I mentioned at the very beginning is the search UI. So at Algolia, we decided to create what we call instant search. So instant search is a set of open source search UI libraries and the goal is to provide features on top of Algolia. What we actually do is ship brilliant and ready to use widgets that package our best practices and came with a good default design. But that's just one part of instant search. 
The other part is that we want the library to be highly customizable. The goal here is that you need to be able to implement your search very fast, but you need to be able also to go further than this. So we have also, we decided to have like a specific React version of Instant Search, which is called React Instant Search. And why we did decided to have that is because we want to provide a proper React API. I mean, you, React API, you are React developers in, this, in that room, so you know that you want components, you want stuff like that. Then we wanted the library to be compatible with both React and React Native. And basically we propose two levels of API. The first one is a widget that I talked about uh, just before. This is like level one uh, in terms of entry. And then you've got the connectors. And basically it's when the library is powerful is thanks to um, uh, its connectors. And it's even more true with React Native because actually we don't ship building widgets for React Native. We do for React, we don't for React Native. And the reason is simple. It's actually hard to find good default widgets on mobile. The UI can be so specific, you can show, change so many things that in the end, widgets kind of not make sense. And what you actually need is the power of the connectors. But what's a connector anyway? Well, it's simply a higher order components. I mean, higher order components because there are many of them. How does that work? You have your higher order component, you pass to that higher order component, your component, and then you get an enhanced component. Basically see that as a widget without any UI. The connector has everything about the search business logic built in, and then you can use any component you want. So the one that React Native provide, or the one that the community provides, it does not matter, you can use anything. And then you can build your UI. But, uh, Let's do some live coding now. Just a bit of context, uh, we are going to build uh, an infinite scroll. Uh, we are going to use some kind of e-commerce product and we are gonna show like the name of the product and the image, just so you can follow uh, uh, the race. And tonight I'm going to use Expo because it's awesome and it's fast. And, and yeah, that, that's it, let's start. So. Here, I already write uh, some code. It's only React Native code here, I will explain uh, during the live coding. The very first thing you want to do when you use React Instant Search is to actually instantiate our main component, which is called Instant Search. Um, basically, you are gonna put all your React Instant Search connected components under it, and it all your credential, uh, the index your target, you are targeting, sorry, uh, stuff like that. So, <coughs> no, let's start with infinite scroll. So for that, in React Native, you can use a flat list. It's basically what exists to make uh, an infinite scroll. And here we are gonna connect that to a component or connector that is called connect infinite x. Uh, so let's just do that. And just by wording that, basically now, in my infinite hits, I get more props. First, I get actually the data. So it, we get the hits and we are going to use that as data of the flat list. And now here I can say, yeah, let's just print the name of our items and put our components into our application. And normally, yeah, boom. <laughs> and then you've got some results. Uh, it's great, but right now there's no scroll. I mean, there's no infinite scroll because we didn't plug the um, refine, uh, I mean, the fetch of the results. And plugging it is uh, easy. We are gonna use the on end reach function of the flat list. Basically each time you reach the end of the list, it will be called and you can do some stuff. And here, I'm just gonna check that we have more item to fetch. So as easy as this props as more. And then if we have more items to fetch, I will just fed, fetch them. And so now if I'm scrolling carefully, yeah, we can see that actually we are fetching more and more results. So we have an infinite scroll. But 
maybe we want to search into our project. So we are going to add the search box on the search bar. Um, here, I already have like a search box component that is just using the text input default component of React Native. And the same as before, I'm going to connect this component with the connect search box connector. And here, again, I'm going to add that to my application. Now I have a search box. Obviously, here, if I'm typing something, nothing's happened because nothing is plugged yet. So let's plug that. We want a search as you type experience. So I'm going to, I'm going to leverage the unchanged text function of the text input. That's going to give me the query each time a uh, user types something. And like before, I will just use the props refine to fetch actually new results using my query. So now if I'm typing something here, you can see that the search is made. It's OK, but we miss something very crucial. We miss the highlighting. Here, there's no way to know what match, I mean, what parts of the result match the query. So we are going to add that. On the web, we have a default highlight component that we don't have on React Native, but we have the connect highlight connector. Basically, I already wrote the code. This can be found on the documentation, but the principle is, sim is, the princip is simple. You get every part of your uh, data, and you know that the data is highlighted or not. And then you need to define the style you're going to apply, which is basically what I'm doing here. And so now I can just actually use that component here instead. And I will just pass to that component the uh, hit and the attribute name we want to highlight. Here, the name. Boom. Fix for bug. It's OK. Yes. And so here, again, if I'm typing something now, the results are highlighted. <coughs> Last thing I want to show you with this demo is what you should do when actually the search is a bit slow because you don't have the good network. Again, those kind of information, React Instance Search provides that to you. So here, what we are going to do is to add a little spinner if the search is stalled. And the search is stalled only if it's more than, I think it's 700 milliseconds, but that's handled by the library because we don't want actually to have a spinner each time something someone is typing something. You want to have it only if the search is stalled. So again, we are going to leverage a React Native component, which is called Activity Indicator. And this component has a prop that is called Animating. And what the Connect Search Box connectors gives you is a prop that is called this prop uh, that is called is a search story. Sorry. And it's going to be a bit. That's annoying. So this is just for the same. So here you can see that the search is a kind of slow, and so you have. Uh, and this is fast. Let's fake it. Mm. Here, so it's slow. So now you can see the spinner that is uh, indicating that the search is in progress. <coughs> so that's it. Um, we have. Uh, examples that are uh, more advanced than what I just showed you, that examples that actually have filters, stuff like that. So if you want, if you have Expo on your phone, you can just scan this QR code and you can try the application. Thank you. <laughs> Any question? Any questions? I still want to throw this sketch box, so please ask questions. Someone in the back. <laughs> no? No, no one? Cool, it was clear. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Marie.